Hello and welcome to Turn One Soul Ring. In every fantasy lore, there's always forgotten characters and story moments, and magic is no exception. This is Forgotten Lore. Continuing on from the last forgotten lore, we left off with Taser energy blasting Nyla and planeswalking away to parts unknown. Nyla then put up a barrier around Rabia, Taser's homeworld, ensuring that he can never go back to his home plane. And now, on with his story. After a couple hundred years, Taser arrives on Dominaria. He picked a bad time to come to Dominaria because just after he arrives, the final sealing of the Shard happens, and he ends up trapped in the Shard's 12 planes of existence. This is the start of the Dominarian Ice Age. It's kind of an obscure event, I don't know if you've heard of it. While Taser is sealed in the Shard, he meets a fellow planeswalker named Christina of the Woods on the continent of Corondor and the two fall in love. They travel throughout the Shard's plains and do what they can to weaken or shatter the Shard. They also try to help other people trapped in the Shard as best as possible. Moving the plot forward, the two are drawn to the summit of the Null Moon by a planeswalker named Farallon. The summit is a ruse by him and two fellow planeswalkers, Tevish, Zat, and Leshrock. Remember these two, they're rather important later. Anyway, the summit falls apart as Farallon, Tevish, Zat, and Leshrock start a battle amongst the planeswalkers there, and escape the shard. However, Farallon's spell squire, Ravidel, does not. He dies, and after the battle, Taser and Christina bring him back to life. They also aid Freilis in casting the world spell that ends the Dominarian Ice Age, and the time of the shard. After being freed from the shard, the two unfortunately break up. The cause of this is Taser's desire to return home to Rabia. He knows that Christina is powerful enough to break Nyla's barrier, but Christina realizes that this would leave them both trapped there. She wants to explore all over the multiverse, so she leaves Taser. Taser, brokenhearted and bitter, took Ravidel on as an apprentice, and plans walked away. Ravidel was not the greatest influence on Taser, as when he saw his master's sadness at not being able to return home with the woman he loved, Ravidel started pushing Taser to use a different method, killing a planeswalker. This was the method that Farallon had used to escape the shard, and Ravidel was convinced that Taser could use it to go back to Rabia. After pushing and pushing, Ravidel finally convinced Taser to do it and he decided to hunt down the evil planeswalkers, Leshrock and Tevish Zat. Unfortunately, Taser couldn't find Tevish Zat, but he found Leshrock and beat him. However, Taser found that he could not kill Leshrock in cold blood, and instead, through some unknown means, trapped Leshrock deep in Phyrexia. Unfortunately, doing this deprived Taser of the energy to return home. During this time, Christina had met and fallen in love with a Minotaur planeswalker named Sandru. Ravidel found this out and told Taser, who still very much held a torch for Christina. This enraged Taser, and he found and attacked Sandru, pursuing him across the multiverse to the plain of Olgrotha. Taser defeated Sandru and banished him to a plain that would take Sandru a millennium to come back from. This action enraged Faraz, the planeswalker guardian of Olgrotha. He hunted down Taser and fought him. Faraz won the fight by splitting Taser's head with a broadsword. This isn't the end of Taser's story, however, as he worked to redeem himself in the Olgrothan afterlife. Having done so, he was allowed to return to his corporeal body, which had aged, growing a beard and appearing much older than he was. Taser kept this body as a reminder of his screw-ups. While he was still on Olgrotha, Taser met a young native planeswalker named Daria, and he decided to stay on Olgrotha to raise her, taking her in as his apprentice and foster daughter. Taser was eventually drawn back to Dominaria by the Mox Beacon, and he and Daria took part in the Planeswalkers' War on the continent of Corindor there. We sadly don't know much about this event, as the comic book depicting it was never released. Damn it, wizards! After the war, Taser and Daria lived in a little cottage just outside of Herloon. All of that changed when the Phyrexians invaded. 
Taysir was recruited by Urza as one of the nine titans to attack Phyrexia, and, due to Teferi being trapped in a time bubble at the time, Daria took his place. Some of the other nine titans included Christina, Freilis, and Tevish. Everyone in the group objected to this because ain't nobody like Tevish Zot. However, Urza insisted that Zot stay in the group. The group's objections were well-founded when Zot accidentally, with all of the quotation marks and the world around it, killed Christina when the walkers were out testing their titan engines, which were mech suits. He then deliberately hunted down and killed Daria. Urza knew this would happen and needed the moral ground to kill Zot to charge one of his weapons, which Urza then proceeded to do. However, later in this assault on Phyrexia, as the planeswalkers and their mech suits were about to destroy Phyrexia, Urza found that he could not destroy Phyrexia because it was too beautiful. Taser, still grieving over the loss of his foster daughter and ex-lover, mutinied and attacked Urza. In response, Urza activated the kill rubric in Taser's Titan engine, destroying the suit and killing Taser. Another member of the Nine Titans, Lord Wingrace, found Taser's body and performed the Ritual of Dalfir on Taser, which involved slicing Taser's heart out of his chest. Wingrace did this so that necromancers couldn't use the body. The last we ever saw of Taser, Wingrace put the heart of Taser into his own body. And that was the story of Taser. He never got to go home to Rabia, and he died under the most tragic of circumstances. May his spirit live forever in the multiverse. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, and also subscribe if you want to help support the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to see more of me, head on over to twitch.tv slash turn one soul ring streams where I stream Magic Arena, or at least I try to stream Magic Arena, every Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good one.